Thank you, IAP. Thank you, IAP Neocha. Thank you, Danchi. And a big thanks to my friend, Ali, for asking me to come here and join. You have already been introduced to the topic of final talks. I thought initially this was quite a simple one. But as I went into it, I should say that I don't have real answers. There is a lot of uncertainty about how to use the various the various modalities to stabilize the circulation in the predominant plant or its cyclic way. Volumes, inotropes, dopamine, so many different things. There are a lot of inotropes available. Each has a different mode of action. And most of the inotropes are used by clinicians, preferences and experiences rather than by evidence. Most of the evidence what you find in the publications is mostly case reports or short case series. But we do not have hard data or evidence to say that this is the inotrope to be used for this condition, this is the inotrope to be used for this condition. So I will not go much into it because my time is now. I don't have much time to talk, talk about it. So what are the hemodynamic compromises of a PDA and its various consequences. They have a relatively low preload. The newborns have high heart rate and a large percentage of it. The amount of time spending diastole is less. So the cardiac feeling becomes less and ultimately the cardiac output is less. They have poor myocardial contractility because of their inherent features. They have high systemic vascular resistance because the placenta is out and increased expression of the alpha receptors. They also have transient adrenal insufficiency which makes them little resistant to the action of the catecholamines. And we also have, we also know that we are, we are uh, the fact is that there is a poor correlation between the blood pressure what we use day in and day out and the systemic blood flow. There, is, there, there are so many studies to say that the blood pressure is not the ideal clinical tool to be used in management of neurinal shock. But unfortunately we have only that. And we also know that the newborns have poor cerebral autoregulation. So as the blood pressure comes down, the cerebral blood flow falls much more easily and the brain gets injured easily. So higher incidence of white matter injury, perivental leukomalacia and so many other consequences do occur because of hypertension. So we need to treat it. So how do we treat it? So what are these inotropes? Any drug which improves the cardiac pulmonary percolation, be it increasing the cardiac uh, contractility, vasoconstriction, vasodilatation, each drug has got multiple actions. It is never a pure cardiac contractility. It is never a vasopressor. So each of them have different actions on the systemic circulation, on the myocardium, on the coronaries, and also on the pulmonary circulation. And the action is dose dependent. At a particular dose, it has a different action. As you keep on increasing the dose, the actions will change and so we need to know about them. Just speaking about the catecholamine receptors, the alpha receptors are there, they predominantly are there in the peripheral circulation cause vasoconstriction. The beta 1 increases the uh, cardiac contractility, beta 2 causes uh, vasodilatation and the dopaminergic one are specifically there in the end organs. They improve the renal and mesenteric circulation. Now if you see the ontogeny of these receptors, it is the alpha receptors which actually are expressed first. So they, these babies easily get vasoconstricted. 
the beta ones appear little later and very late in the postnatal life you have the dopaminergy. So the dopaminergic effects are not really very important to us. So if you see, see the dopamine, again it is a dose dependent one in a low dose with, at, at around below 2 micrograms. It improves the renal perfusion between 2 to 6, it will cause little cardiac inotropy and beyond 6, it has got extensive peripheral vasoconstrictor effects. So by and large, dopamine is a vasopressor, it increases the mean arterial pressure, but it, as has been already told, it can also cause increase in the pulmonary vascular resistance. However, despite of its various disadvantages, it is still widely used as a first-line inotope in most clinical situations. Dopamine in doses below 10 micrograms is a predominant inotrope, improves the myocardial compactity, but after that we start to find a little bit of peripheral vascular relaxation. So, so you have an improvement in the systemic blood flow. So what it does is improves the blood flow rather than increasing the blood, pr blood pressure. Also, it has some effects on the pulmonary vascular resistance. So in case of PTHN, dobutamin is uh, can have some effect, can bring about some improvement, especially if the patient is a little hypotensive. Now, epinephrine has been traditionally used as an hypotension in hypotension refractory to the first line the probes and in the post cardiac cardiac state. In, a, in the low dose, the, there is a little difference in the action of the epinephrine in low dose and high dose. In a little low dose, the, that is up to 0.1 micrograms per kg per minute, it improves the myocardial contractility and causes little peripheral vasodilatation. But if you go beyond 0.1, it has got uh, increased vascular resistance and it, it works as a pure vasopressor. However, we cannot use adrenaline for a long time because of its high potential for adverse effects, tachycardia, increased myocardial oxygen requirement and so many other things. Norepinephrine has not been widely used in newborns, but we have some reports coming in these days. It has been used successfully with benefit in pediatric and adult age group in septic shock in the dose of and uh, we know that it is a predominant vasopressor, 0.05 to 0.5 micrograms per kg per minute and has a predominant effect on the alpha receptors. There are some reports in the newborns also and some reports have shown that it does cause little peripheral pulmonary vascular, it, it improves, decreases the pulmonary vascular resistance. So if there are some case reports, I would not like to go into various reports, saying that it, it can also be used as one of the inotropes when you have a fall in the blood pressure, non infusion can be used in PPHN also. Milton mm -hmm. has been talked by Dr. Mohan Mohit now, it promotes, it decreases after load. It improves the cardiac output and significantly brings down pulmonary vascular pressure by different mechanisms, not by catabolic receptors. It is by inhibiting the phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme. It has been primarily been our interest is whether it works well. It does very well. It, it works well in case of pulmonary hypertension, but, but main thing is that it can produce significant hypotension, in which case we need to use some other drugs along with this. People have used it as bolus followed by infusion. Because bolus can cause profound hypotension, many clinicians actually omit bolus and start the high infusion that Bevel uh, initially itself. Now, coming to a vasopressor is a potent vasopressor. It potentiates the effects of noradrenaline by B1 receptors. The high dose can be used, but it will cause transient hyponatremia. But what is interest to us is in the normal physiological doses, that is 0 0.0017 to 0 0.0007 units per kg uh, per minute. It is very good potent vasopressor, but at the same time, it can cause pulmonary vasodilatation. So there are some last few reports have shown that it works very well. It has found an improvement in oxygenation in patients 
who have been ventilated for PPHN also. Uh, coming to uh, coming to hydrocortisone, we know that the sick babies have a relative adenocortical insufficiency, and these glucocorticoids are important to regulate the expression of cardiovascular adrenergic receptors. And this, when hydrocortisone is given, it enhances the sensitivity of already supercalculating cardiovasculars. So it is often used. People have used it as a primary inotrope, but by and large it is used uh, for uh, shock refractory to the first line inotrope. The dose is 1 to 2 milligrams per kg every 6 to 12 hours for 3 days. We don't have to actually wean it off. So when you consider starting inotropes in the NSC, we all know that we would start in shock, in low blood pressure, even if there are no other signs of shock, in congestive heart failure and also in so what are, the, what are our tools to assess the hemodynamic status of a baby in the NIC? So we have the uh, CFP, heart rate, cold, preference, difference in the temperature between the central and the peripheral parts of the body, a low map, uh, decreased activity, low perfusion index on the saturation monitor, uh, metabolic acidosis and elevated arterial factor. So all these things are there, but it should uh, uh, be backed by a good history, whether there is a volume loss, there are risk factors for peptisemia. So when we have this, then we can say whether this is an hypovolemia, whether this is a distributive shock. So based on your clinical examination history and these things, you come to some idea whether this is what kind of shock it is. But that's not enough because we know there are some limitations to our clinical assessment. So what do we do? We have to take the use of functional echocardiogram, which has come in a big way. So you can assess the volume, you can assess the myocardial contractility, you can assess the cardiac outputs, you can see whether there is PDA, PPHN, and whether there is some important congenital heart diseases which can present in the first week of life. So all these things, so it is nowadays, uh, if you are in intensivist in the NICU, it's almost a must that you should know at least some basics of the echocard. So you can assess the preload by assessing the uh, IDC volume when it's you know called collapsible pretty. You can see the ventricular filling. You can see the ventricular filling and assess the cardiac contractility. You can just eyeball the cardiac contractility. Just how, how much is the contraction in it? the taxation to see whether what is a myocardial contractility. You can make simple measurements of fractional shortening uh, to see whether the, what is the historic function. You can also measure the diastolic function because these days it is important to know whether diastolic filling is happening well or not. So that you can do by transmitral Doppler and calculating E by A ratio. Uh, you can, if you are a little more advanced, you know, you are, uh, uh, you can make uh, proper measurements, then you can assess the left ventricular output by just simply measuring the aortic diameter and the flow across the biotic wall. You can also similarly make uh, the right ventricular output also. But we know that in the transitional circulation, there are some shunts, there is PDA, there is shunting across the uh, PFO. So the left ventricular output and the right ventricular output assessment may not be accurate in the newborn period. So what we need to do, and these days we have some interest, is that the, probably the superior venocable flow which comes back to the heart is probably more representative of the circulatory status in the body than the LV output and barbie output. It is one of the most difficult things to measure and quantitate, but it can be done by, by measuring the diameter of the SVC when it comes to the RA and also by the velocity. So these are these are all the things which can, can be done. Now let me just uh, um, uh, just go through some five or six case scenarios. We have a freedom in the week with maternal amniotitis, high risk for early onset peptisemia, vestibular distress, ventilated, surfactant has been given, but yet 
there is high oxygen requirement. Your clinical assessment shows low blood pressure, poor capillary filling time, tachycardia is there. Echo shows tricuspid regurgitation plus plus, bidirectional PDA, which shows that the pulmonary vascular pressures are high and there is high cardiac output. So what is this condition? In this clinical condition, what we have? We have, we have a low systemic vascular resistance and a slightly elevated, some elevated pulmonary artery hypertension. But classically, usually we would like to use dopamine because it will bring about peripheral vasoconstriction, increase the SVR, some degree of improvement in the myocardial contractility would occur. Uh, we may use, if the dopamine is not enough, we may add the dopamine. But the second alternative to this dopamine plus minus dopamine, I would like to use noradrenaline in this septic shock because we know that it will improve the peripheral uh, vascular resistance. It will also cause a little degree of uh, pulmonary, pulmonary vascular resistance. So you can use many of these things. And these are not, I would not say that these are statements which are guidelines, which these are some of the assessments based on some of the case reports and the study of the pathophysiologies. Now the same case, let's say the same case now has uh, in a different presentation has a normal blood pressure. And echo shows a low fractional shortening. So the my myocardial contractility is uh, impaired and cardiac output decreased. So what do we have? This condition is poor myocardial contractility associated with elevated systemic vascular resistance. So you need to, what you need to do is you need to bring down the systemic vascular resistance. It means that you need to have some degree of, you need to improve the myocardial performance and symptoms. So my ideal drug in this case, when you have a normal blood pressure in shock-like state, and if you have echo which shows that the cardiac output is less, uh, the myocardial contractility is impaired, so dopamine would be one of the best drugs. A more potent drug which has a similar action as dopamine is a low dose epinephrine, not exceeding more than 0.1 micrograms per kg per minute. So you can use any of these two to address this kind of uh, shock. The third is uh, what has been already been told about uh, an MAS um, case who is uh, intubated, ventilated, HFO and you have a still very high oxygenation index and your PECO shows TR plus 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 RBSP which is right ventricular systolic pressure of 62 which is high. You know that the normal is around 25. So you know that this is a case of PPHN and uh, what would you like to like, use if uh, there is no shock, you would want to use milrinone as your first line drug. You can use dopamine also. Dopamine has some effect on this, but if you want to specifically target, that in, in, in our clinical experience, we have found that the milrinone is, uh, uh, produces better clinical effects when compared to dopamine. So I would like to use milrinone in this case and if you, if I find that there is a drop in the blood pressure, the diastolic pressure is just two minutes, one minute. If it drops down, then I would like to add norepinephrine to this. And then we have uh, day one, 29 liter, extremely low blood pressure, the RDS, CPAPs, perfected, low blood pressure, some mild metabolic acidosis, doubtful of shock, uh, echo shows a small PDA, the SVC flow is low, the SVC flow should be at least 45 above. So it is a day one hyper hypotension in extremely low birth baby and we know that this is because of removal of the low pressure placenta so that the heart has to pump against an elevated SVR and studies have shown that uh, do Dopamine is better in such clinical situation. So extremely low birth baby, day one hypotension you can use, but there are some reports which say that we can also use dopamine also. 
This is a large wash case term, deep aspect sphere, resuscitated, borderline hypotension, echo shows, biological dysfunction. So we have so many uh, alternatives in this. So we can use initially dobutamine, dobutamine, uh, or dob dobutamine or epinephrine. So any of these things can be targeted to improve the myocardial contractility. So I would like to conclude say, saying that uh, it's not very easy to say that this drug has to be used for this. So we need to understand the pathophysiology of this condition. What is the condition? Shock is not a condition. Shock is pro produced by so many other things, whether it's a septic shock, early shock. What kind of a shock is this? And what can, what would happen to this ischemic vascular persistence? What is happening to the pulmonary vascular persistence? What is happening to the myocardial contractility? So the afterload, preload. So all these things have to be taken into consideration. And you also have to understand, be very sure what is the mechanism of action of each of these drugs. And uh, if you have to manage your babies better, then I think the use of echocardiogram in the assessment of hemodynamic state that is very important and we need to more importantly after we start we need to we need to closely monitor and see whether it works very well. Thank you very much. Thank you.